like I was just on another planet. How Diego Simeone knocked out Jurgen Klopp, Liverpool 2, Atletico Madrid 3, Atletico Madrid win 4 2 on aggregate, a tactical analysis. Before this video starts, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out on all the upcoming Premier League and Champions League tactical analysis videos over the next few weeks. After this video, check out my tactical analysis of Manchester United's 2-0 win over Manchester City, looking at how Solskjaer's pentagon-shaped formula defeated Pep Guardiola again. That video will be linked in the description below, it's currently on the 125,000 view mark, so let's try and get it up to 150,000 views. And also check out some of our other videos, including our tactical analysis of Manchester City's 2-1 win over Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu. So going into the game, Klopp set up his side in his usual 4-3-3 shape, with Adrian in goal, Trent Alexander-Arnold at right back, Robertson at left back, with Virgil van Dijk and Joe Gomez as centre-backs, Henderson played as a deep single pivot in midfield, with Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain playing to the right of him, Wijnaldum to the left, and a front three of Mo Salah on the right, Mane on the left, and Firmino playing as a false nine. Simeone once again used the 4-4-2 shape with Oblak in goal, Trippier and Lodi the fullbacks, Savic and Felipe at centre back with a midfield double pivot of Koke and Thomas Partey, Sal on the left of the midfield, Correa on the right and a front two of Diego Costa and Jao Felix. So as expected, Atletico Madrid were content to allow Liverpool to control possession, sitting off them in a deep defensive block, narrow 4-4-2 shape, with the front two, Felix and Costa, not pressurising the two centre-backs when Liverpool had possession in the middle third. Instead, the front two would position themselves close together and look to cut off the passing lanes into Jordan Henderson. Klopp altered his possession setup slightly from the first leg to counter the problems that Liverpool faced up against Diego Simeone's two banks of four. You can watch my tactical analysis of the first game if you want to understand these problems in more detail. I will link the video in the eye above and in the description below. But just to be brief, in the first leg, Salah and Mane were positioned very narrow as they usually are, playing as wide forwards, with the fullbacks Alexander Arnold and Robertson providing the width in the system. This played into Atletico's game plan in the first game as they were able to sit narrow and cut off the passing lanes into Mane and Salah when the ball shifted out wide to the fullbacks. The Atletico Madrid wide players could shift across and confront them, which meant that the fullbacks could remain narrow and therefore Liverpool weren't able to stretch the Atletico back line for the likes of Firmino, Salah and the two advanced central midfielders to take advantage of. However, in this game, Klopp instructed Salah to remain wide on the right and give Liverpool some advanced width. This was done so that Salah, being wide, would give Liverpool an outlet on the right. They could shift the ball out wide to him and create a 1v1 against Lodi, which would give Liverpool a great funnel to progress the attack into the box. Also, by having Lodi move over to close down Salah's space, the Atletico backline would be stretched. Gaps would appear in between Felipe and Lodi, which would give Oxley chamberlain and Firmino the space to make third man runs into. Salah's wide positioning would also allow Alexander-Arnold to sit slightly deeper than Robertson on the other side. Playing also like the football equivalent of a quarterback, he was able to utilise his world-class long passing and deep crossing ability a lot better than he would have been able to if he was positioned further down the flank. Whilst Atletico did sit off Liverpool in the middle third, when the ball went back to Liverpool's centre-backs, in the area around the box, Atleti would use this as a chance to press aggressively to force Liverpool into a long pass up the pitch. Costa and Felix would move to press the centre-backs, and Koke would push up from the midfield line to press Henderson, creating a V-shaped pressing system. Koke did start in the midfield double pivot alongside Partey, but midway through the half, he and Sal switched positions in that midfield four. With Firmino dropping deep from the forward line and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and Wijnaldum positioning themselves high up the pitch, the central midfield two of Atletico were tasked with not only cutting off the passing lanes into the half spaces, but tracking the runs of these players when they looked to make underlapping runs into the space between the fullback and centre-back. It was this sort of situation where Liverpool were able to make the breakthrough. Salah's wide positioning pulled Lodi wide and created the space between Felipe and the left-back. Alexander Arnold's steeper positioning gave him the option of swinging in a deep cross, but also pulled Koke further forward to close him down. This essentially created a 1v1 battle between Oxlade Chamberlain and Sal, and on this occasion, Sal's reaction time wasn't fast enough to track Chamberlain's underlapping run completely, and it was from this resulting cross where Vinealdon was able to head home to give Liverpool a 1 0 lead going into the break. We can see how this goal wouldn't have come about if Klopp hadn't instructed Salah to maintain his width. 
With Salah sitting narrow, Lodi would have subsequently retained his narrow defensive positioning next to Felipe and thus wouldn't have created the space for Oxley chamberlain to make the third man run into. Felipe and Savic are two defenders who are very good in the air, so having Arnold stay wide and putting crosses would have played into Atletico's hands. Atletico didn't play poorly in the first half, they played quite well defensively, even if they didn't offer much penetration going forward. However, the main fault with Simeone's system is that they are over-reliant on individuals following their tasks perfectly for the whole game, and a simple lapse in concentration from one player, in this case Sal, can turn a good half into a bad one. So going into the second half, Liverpool's offensive game plan didn't change. They continued to keep Salah wide on the right, having him isolate Renan and Lodi, who's having a tough battle up against the Egyptian, and having Firmino and Oxley chamberlain move into the spaces created by Salah's positioning. We also saw Oxley chamberlain moving into central positions that weren't available during the first half. He would sit high and slightly wider on the right in the attack. When the ball was shifted to Robertson on the left, he would move inside into the space in behind Atletico's double pivot of Thomas Partey and Sal and look to receive the ball right in front of the back line. He had a few testing shots from this position and along with Salah, he seemed to be Liverpool's biggest attacking weapon. Mane took up a lot more central positions, playing as a centre forward for most of the half, which gave Robertson the licence to push down the left flank more often than he did in the first half. Firmino would continuously move from side to side, looking to get in the spaces between Atletico's midfield and defence, which forced Atletico to drop maybe 10 yards deeper. This subsequently allowed Liverpool to sustain the pressure, with Atletico not having an outlet to progress their attack, with both forwards and their midfield unit remaining so far deep. Urante was brought on to the right side of midfield with Costa coming off and Correa moving into the front too. This didn't change the flow of the game, but it was clear that Simeone recognised that Atletico needed some sort of attacking outlet and a way of progressing the ball forward and having both Felix and Correa in advanced positions who are better dribblers than Costa, Atletico would now have a better chance of doing this. This almost paid dividends with Sal playing a direct pass into Jao Felix which got Atletico into a 2v2 situation in Liverpool's defensive third which was exactly what Simeone was looking for. Felix's shot was tame from this attack but it would be a warning sign to Liverpool about the potential dangers Atletico could pose on the counter which would come to fruition later on in the game. Klopp surprisingly brought off Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain who had been Liverpool's best player along with Salah on that right flank. Salah's wide position enabled him to isolate Lodi and dribble past him into the box on a number of occasions and Chamberlain's underlapping runs were a main source of Liverpool's ball progression into the Atletico box. However, Klopp wanted to allow Robertson to push further forward down the left flank and Milner moved to play as a left-sided central midfielder to give Liverpool the defensive security down that left side. Oblak made a few outstanding saves to deny Liverpool and push the tie into extra time. In the first half of extra time, Atletico attempted to stop Liverpool's ball progression from their defensive third by asserting a higher press, however this backfired as their midfield wasn't coordinated enough to push up tight onto the Liverpool midfield, and therefore Gomez's simple ball to bypass the press left Feinaldum 1v1 against Lodi and he was able to go past the Brazilian easily on the right flank. It was from this position that he was able to put in a great cross from which Firmino's header hit off the post and fell right for him for him to knock the ball into the empty net. However, Atletico's higher press did pay off in the end as Correa and Llorente hunted down Gomez and when Adrian Pauli hit Gomez's back pass straight to Felix, who then played a reverse pass into Llorente, the Spaniard was able to shock Anfield with a composed shot slotted into the bottom corner. Simeone brought on Morata in order to progress the attacks forward, with Morata a much better player at holding up the ball than Felix or Correa, and we saw the benefit of this as Morata was able to hold on to the ball from Atletico's counter-attack. Rather than playing a rush pass forward, he held onto the ball before reversing a pass into Llorente, who once again slotted the ball into the bottom corner past Adrian, whose positioning was at fault for both the goals. In the second half of extra time, Liverpool threw Van Dijk forward into the attack, but their attacking play seemed rushed with Arnold and Robertson crossing from deep positions, which only played into the hands of Atletico's defenders. Morata's late goal wrapped up the tie and dumped the rain in champions out of the competition at a surprisingly early stage, leaving Klopp's side with only the Premier League trophy to win this season. Though Simeone's side did play incredibly well from a defensive point of view in both legs, Simeone's system does need adaptation, as even though they made it through this tie, Liverpool did have some great chances throughout the game, with Robertson's header hitting the bar and Oblak making a number of great saves. Nevertheless, as happened to Pep's Bayern in 2016, the favourite has once again been dumped out of the competition by Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid side. 
Thank you for watching, remember to like and share the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more tactical analysis videos like this.